Today I'm going to be sharing the sixth chapter of the Octane Module Development Series. In this session, we're going to be focusing on scheduled jobs. Before I go any further, I'd like to mention that if you want to get involved with the community, go to www.octane.org. Uh, if you want to get access to the source code for the Octane Framework, go to github.com slash octane slash octane framework. And if you want to get access to the source code that's uh, related to the sample module that I've been sharing uh, throughout this series, you can go to github.com slash octane slash dnf.projects. And with that, we're going to switch over to Visual Studio. So first off, we're going to go to our sample module project. And we're going to talk about scheduled jobs. So what is the purpose of a scheduled job? Um, typically, that is to do some background processing um, that is not dependent upon you know, any interaction from an end user. So things like uh, you know, perhaps doing um, something on a daily basis. Like in, for the example in this particular module is that on a daily basis, we want the site to go out to GitHub and retrieve all of the metrics for the various projects that have been defined that are part of my module. Um, I don't want a user to have to go to the site and click a button to do that. I want it to happen automatically. And so Octane does have a job scheduler um, that runs in the background and allows you to create these types of, of jobs. So I think the first thing that I want to show you is on the uh, Octane framework side and basically how these jobs manifest themselves through the user interface. So if I run Octane and I go into my admin dashboard, um, I have a scheduled jobs area. And if I load that up, I can see that I have a couple of scheduled jobs um, which are defined. I've got a notification job and I've got a GitHub activity job. The GitHub activity job is the job that I define that's part of the module that I'm creating. Um, you can create as many jobs as you want. Um, so basically you just need to give them a name. You give them the specific type. Um, and this is like the, the you know, fully qualified assembly type name. Um, for your job, whether or not it's enabled, you can give it a schedule as well. You can run it by every minute, every hour, day, or month. Um, you can have a start date for it and an end date, and then you can have specify how many items that you want retained in the history log for the job. Um, so that's how scheduled jobs appear in the user interface. So let's go back to my sample project. So I have a GitHub job that I've defined. First thing to notice is it has to be, it has to inherit from hosted service base. Hosted service base um, is, is a basically a you know, base class that provides a lot of functionality for scheduled jobs in Octane. And if we go over to Octane and take a look at the hosted service base, we can see that um, it has one abstract method called execute job, which needs to be overridden. Um, in your custom job uh, and the rest of the information, or sorry, the, the rest of the methods um, are there to basically handle the scheduling, the logging, um, and all of the, you know, all of the other logic related to a scheduled job. So pretty straightforward. In the Octane framework itself, you have an example job that you can look at, which is the notification job. Um, one thing to keep in mind with any because this is using I hosted service, which is part of ASP.NET Core. Um, when you're using a hosted service, I mean, you, you don't have any context. And so because of that, you cannot use standard dependency injection, um, like the type of standard dependency injection that you normally use. So you have to do more a manual dependency or service um, registration. So you have to get your required services using the, um, the service scope factory. So this is the only thing that works in order to get access to your services. In this particular case, when the job executes, it's iterating through the aliases that are part of the installation. Each alias is associated to sites. So it then iterates through the sites that are part of an alias. And you were responsible for coming up with whatever logging that you want. So in this case, it's logging information related to the sites that it's iterating through. Um, 
if a site has defined that it has settings like SMTP host um, defined, then it's going to actually read the notification repository and it's going to send out email. And so that's how email is basically delivered on a background job um, from the notifications that are generated through Octane. So if we shift back over to our sample project now and we look at the GitHub project, we can see that it's somewhat similar. It's overriding the execute job method. Um, it is iterating through all of the different aliases that are part of my installation. Uh, and then it's iterating through all of the sites that are associated to each alias. And as it's processing through, it's getting settings that were defined by the module. So um, I've saved the module ID, which is related to each of my projects so that I can very easily get the settings. Um, if the GitHub username and GitHub password have been defined, um, then it's going to use REST Sharp. Um, so it's spinning up a REST client. It's going to call GitHub. It's going to use my username and password um, for basic authentication. And it's going to send REST requests to GitHub um, on a number of different URL endpoints to retrieve different types of information. So this is how it gets information related to contributors, commits, issues, pull requests, um, and then it updates the, uh, the repository with the metrics that it retrieves. And of course, it does this for each project on a daily basis. And it does uh, all of the different logging. And of course, you've got to sort of concatenate your log messages uh, into some form, and then it will return your log messages back. And that the log messages um, will be saved with the execution plan for that particular job. And so I guess the, the, the next question is, you know, how do you provision a job? Well, you can do it through the user interface like I showed earlier, right? Where you can basically add a new job manually. Um, however, this module wants it to be done in a more automated way. So if we look at um, the script that uh, exists for this module, we'll see that it, you know, it provisions a couple of tables, but it also near the bottom here, inserts a record um, manually into the um, job table. So when this module is installed, it will insert a record into the job table and then it'll be automatically um, populated into the, the scheduled job interface. Um, so this is a convenient way so that, um, you know, when you install a module, any scheduled jobs are automatically installed along with it. Um, and um, I think that um, that covers the, uh, the scheduled job uh, aspect of Octane. And next I'm going to be covering packaging and deployment.